Welcome back to Saturday, and I'm Brian. This is Brian's Beat. Woo-hoo. You know, I got to tell you, I used to think that song was by the Jackson 5. I didn't like it, whether it was by the Jackson 5 or the Osmonds. Then they both ended up with TV shows. Woo! At any rate, here we are. It looks like it's going to be a soggy Saturday. There is rain in the forecast. Hey, I, I, you kind of get used to it. I've been doing this show Saturday mornings since 2017. 2017. And we have had foul weather the majority of those days, especially during the summer. Ugh. At any rate, welcome. Brian's Beat is the only show born at the apex of freedom, entrepreneurship, and nomadism. Let's see. Oh, uh, thank you, ABC, for letting us know what you want us to know. Now it's my turn. I'm going to tell you what I want you to know. The Red Sox scored a dozen runs last night. They beat the Orioles by two. What else? 100 30 shopping days before Christmas. And start counting your pennies. It's going to be one of those big government stories days. Baseball has double plays. Massachusetts has doubled the eviction notices on folks in shelters. Mayor Mitchell wants more accessory dwelling units in New Bedford. Certainly wants to make it easier. Speaking of more, more debris from wind turbines washing ashore in Westport. From the I need work economy, economic complications convinced the great owners of Doco New Bedford to hang the closed for good sign. The survey says... More than half never intend to fully buy an electric vehicle. I think that should read to buy a fully electric vehicle. While Israeli soldiers gloat over sexually assaulting Palestinians, their government debates if torture is okay. Goodbye, Stewart Health. Hello, higher taxes. More after the Brian's B quote of the day. Jim is in studio six and seven eights. He's got our Town Square Sunday preview. The Bitcoin Biz Barometer, next half hour. Monthly VRX brings us the Brian's B quote of the day. After we learn a little bit more about today, a very historic day. August 20. No, it isn't. It's August 17th, 2024. Why is it historic? It's Baby Boomer Recognition Day. As if we haven't been recognized since 1946. Today is our day. Today is our day. What's going to happen two years from now? It's going to be baby boomer recognition year because starting with January 1st, 2026, that would be, hmm, 80 years of baby boomerism. It's also Chef's Appreciation Day. I appreciate a good chef, that's for sure. Clear the Shelters Day. As I mentioned earlier, eviction notices have gone out to the folks living in shelters. I believe the Clear the Shelters Day is about something entirely different because it is also Homeless Animals Day. And I think clearing the shelter, in fact, this is Clear the Shelter Month. 
as far as getting the dogs and the cats out of those institutions. It's also, and you got to laugh at this one. It's, it's the meaning of is day. The meaning of is day. <laughs> oh, yeah. National number two pencil day. National black cat appreciation day. I guess. Um, uh, I, I, black cats number 13. I can do without both. Honeybee day. I love my feet day. And I certainly do. Don't you? I certainly would feel lost without my feet. National Nonprofit Day. Thrift Shop Day. And it's also Vanilla Custard Day. Hmm. 1907. Pike's Place Market in Seattle opened for fish catching. I don't know if you've ever been there. I went to the market a couple of times in my in my days of living and working in Seattle. And they've got these fish folks. And somebody, let's say they want half a salmon. I mean, like half a whole salmon, you know. Somebody will yell out, hey, need a salmon. Another person throws the salmon. The person who yelled catches the salmon, gets it cut up for the person. It's a fish. I've never quite seen anything like it. But that marketplace, Pike's Place Market, opened on this date in 1907. Hurricane Camille bashes the Gulf Coast of Louisiana and Mississippi. I think it also hit parts of Texas. Killed 256, created more than a billion dollars in damage. I think at the time, that was the biggest hurricane ever to damage the United States of America. Again, that was 1969. Another bashing on this date, 1969, upstate New York. Day three of Woodstock. And for many of us, that was quite the date. Day three featured Joe Conker, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, Blood, Sweat and Tears, Country Joe and the Fish. Yeah, yeah, Country Joe got a got a little carried away. But the fish cheer was born on that date, or at least to the best of our knowledge, that's when we heard it, on this date, August 17th, 1969. <laughs> and uh, I talked about it briefly. Now I'm going to get a little bit more into it. He was president. She was an intern. William Jefferson Clinton admitted He admitted he lied while revealing he had an improper wing-wang with that woman, Monica Lewinsky. He was testifying. Some of us saw this, and if you didn't see it, you probably saw it in the news. He tried to give uh, some wiggle around about is. And he, he came up with this, this slogan. I guess that depends on what the meaning of is, is. Do you remember that? President of the United States. So if you wonder how we're in the situation that we're in, whether you support Trump, whether you support Biden, whether you supported Obama, all the others, remember that. Remember, we had a president, and and this was 1998 when all of this came out, and he had been president for several years by that time. 
That depends on what the meaning of is is. Whew. Wow. That's the kind of stuff that we live through. Monthly VRX brings us the Brian's B quote of the day. If you're spending less than $20 a month for prescription drugs, great. If not, then our monthly VRX service might be a good option for you. Check for yourself at monthlyvrx.com. And the Brian's B quote of the day from Babe Ruth. Never let the fear of striking out get in your way. Never let the fear of striking out get in your way. Now, for most of us, Babe Ruth, he was the Sultan of Swat. He was the home run champ. I forgot how many he hit. But he held the record. And then Hank Aaron broke that record. But here's a record that, to the best of my knowledge, has not been broken, that Babe Ruth set. Babe Ruth held or still holds the record for striking out the most of any major league baseball player. So when he says, never let the fear of striking out get in your way, he knows what he's talking about. 508-996-0500 508-996-0500 is how you get onto the program today. Jim. Jim is going to tell us what's going on on Town Square Sunday in a bit. And next half hour, I've got the Brian's B quote of the day. And we got, we've got we got a lot of stuff. Just a, a, a ton of stuff to present. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a brief break and when we come back we'll start letting it all hang out well it is but before we go down the big government stories let's bring it home for for just a bit i misspoke yesterday not the first time not the last woman friend is probably saying yep he's absolutely correct I thought that early voting here in the Commonwealth was starting Monday. It doesn't start until next Saturday, Saturday the 24th. It goes from Saturday the 24th to um, Friday, August 30th, and then we go into the Labor Day weekend, and it will cease. And then I think the primary election day is the following Tuesday. So there's still time. To uh, get your paperwork in if you prefer to vote early. I will be one of those. I will vote early and only once. As opposed to folks in Chicago who like to vote early and often. Primary election day. Okay. So we got that out of the way. Frederick Douglass. There's a, a bust of Frederick Douglass. A young Frederick Douglass at Abolition Row Park in New Bedford. I drive by that bust oh, once every other week, sometimes twice in a week. I'm looking to see how many folks are coming out to look. Usually there's nobody there or somebody might be walking a dog or someone that could be a park bench drunk, sitting in one of the chairs, but but rarely do I see anybody admiring the bust or, or the park. I digress. I do want to let it be known that as much as I admire Frederick Douglass, I never met Frederick Douglass. Frederick Douglass never met Rosa Parks. Yours truly, not only interviewed Rosa Parks, but spent a couple of hours with Ms. Parks back in the 1990s. Why am I bringing her up? She was a freedom fighter. I think many people, if, if you know the name, you know what she did. She started the bus boycott 
in Montgomery, Alabama, 1955, I believe was the year. I bring her into this conversation because there is a protest planned for today up at the Boston Common. And the woman planning this protest likes what she's doing, what she is protesting for, similar to what Rosa Parks did back in the 1950s. The woman's name is Katrina Breeze. Katrina Breeze. She is the founder of the group Equality. I did not misspeak. And she plans on leading this protest on the common today, weather permitting, I guess. I don't know. Because what she wants is the state to allow women to be able to go topless in public without criminal penalty. Now, I have no idea how many women would really want to do that. I do believe that if if a man can walk around topless, then a woman should be able to do the same thing. And I'm not really in favor of government imposing more laws. So in this particular case, men would have to wear a shirt or cover themselves up. But I, I, you'll pardon me as much as I believe that women should have the same opportunities as men. I, I, I don't think that that comparing what Rosa Parks did in the 1950s so people could sit wherever they wanted to on a bus compares at all to women being able to walk around topless. Now, there may be some women listening at this particular time. You don't even want to jump in because you're thinking, eh. but it is it comparable? I'm asking you. I could be way off. I am a guy. It's not that I don't think that you shouldn't be able to walk around topless. By the way, this this woman, Breeze, is saying that she plans to be shirtless, but will cover her nipples with stickers depicting male nipples. Huh. I, I, look, there's one community in the Commonwealth where women can go topless. And that's Nantucket. And I think that has to be at the beaches. I think there are a couple of nude beaches on Cape Cod. Maybe there are some in other places, but really, you want to com- you want to compare? I, I'm, here's what gets me. It's the Rosa Parks commonality. I just don't think it fits. Katrina Breeze, talking to the Boston Globe in an interview, says that she thinks women should have the same right to go topless in public as men. Okay. They should have that same right. Or, I guess men should not have that right. But can you imagine, let's let's think about this for a second. Can you imagine what it would be like if the great and general court, in their infinite wisdom, came up with some type of plan where men would have to wear a bra or a top to their bathing, you know, what, whatever the case may be, a shirt. Well, I guess it's possible. The other side, I don't think that I don't think that the legislature is going to approve 
women being able to be topless. And I think that there are plenty of women in the great and general court that would be for it. But I think that the men, as much as they would like to look, and I certainly would look, I don't think that they're going to vote it in because they're going to believe that it will cause too much of a problem. Can you imagine? Now, think about this for a second. You're driving your car down the street. And you see topless women. Can you see the potential for an accident? And what are you going to say to the judge in the courtroom? Well, (laughs) there were these women, they didn't have any tops on, and I just kind of looked. And I took my eyes off the road. All of a sudden, we're going to have new meaning to distracted drivers. So I, you know what, Ms. Breeze, Mrs. Breeze, whatever, however you want to call yourself, I think, I think that you are correct that there is a discrimination that's going on with this. I don't like that you are comparing what you're doing to what Rosa Parks did. She was thrown in jail because she wouldn't give up her seat on a bus. Even you, you know what the law is, and you're covering up your your nipples. Maybe if you weren't covering up your nipples and were willing to be thrown by, you know, behind bars and would stay there for a given period of time until somebody could bail you out. Maybe you have a, a, a better chance at, at, at your point. I don't think you do. I think that you, I, you know, throw out the Rosa Parks thing. That's, that's what it is. Go out there and fight because you are a woman and you believe that you deserve this right to be topless. You're tired of seeing men being able to do it and we can't do it. But don't compare yourself to Rosa Parks. To me, that is a slap in Ms. Park's face. All right, let's go over to Studio 6 and 7 eights. That's where Jim is. And Jim has our Town Square Sunday preview. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, everyone. Here's what's happening this week on Town Square Sunday. If you're a lover of the performing arts, it's an exciting time to be in New Bedford. While the Citerion Theater is closed for renovations... Groups like the Festival Theater, Steeple Playhouse, and Your Theater Incorporated are going strong. Community liaison Eric Paradise joins us Sunday morning to preview the 24-25 season of productions for Your Theater and also the Steeple Playhouse. And we'll tell you how one community nonprofit, the Tyler Joseph Leonard Foundation, is working to prevent suicide in our region and how you can help by attending a fundraiser on September 7th. I'm Jim Phillips. Join us for Town Square Sunday, Sunday morning at 6 and 11 on 1420 WBSM and 99.5 FM. Thanks much, Jim. It's time now for the Bitcoin Biz Barometer, where we measure the universal crypto marketplace. Bitcoin, after a couple of weeks of up, 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 Now we see our second week in a row now where the numbers have gone down. And when I say go down, they've gone down more than $1,000 in a week's span. $59,162 Bitcoin this morning compared to one week ago at roughly the same time. Ethereum coming in at $2,598. That's down 23 bucks. Binance Coin is up 11 at 521. Solana, 139, down $15. XRP is at 56 cents. That's down 2 cents. Tuncoin at $6. Dogecoin at 10 cents. Both are even. Even Steven. Remember that one? Even Steven. 
That's your Bitcoin Biz Barometer for today, August 17th, 2024. As always, I get my numbers from coinmarketcap.com. And speaking of numbers... This is Big Government Stories. Yes, Rick, I know it is. I mean, there, there are so many. I've got tons of big government stories. I mentioned earlier, going to bring it back up right now. I mentioned earlier that the uh, business called Doco New Bedford has put up its close for good sign. Actually, they put up a closed sign, but they are closed for good. They um, sent out a notice through Facebook that because of economic challenges and personal reasons, they were closing the business, a business that's been open for four plus years. They started during the crisis called pandemic. I know both of the owners. One of them used to be a regular on, on my show, on, on the Saturday show, uh, the Jill, Jillian. And it really shocked me because I had been reaching out to her. We, we also, Jill and I and, and her, her husband, husband, Jason, we also do some other business stuff together. And so I was trying to follow up with them over the past couple of weeks and I didn't hear anything back. And so, you know, I wondered again and I sent out another notice and then I, the word came down that they were closing. And I said, wow. And of course that wow says to me, now at least you know why you didn't hear back from them. Have you noticed? All right, if you don't know, Doco New Bedford, it, 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 a glorified coffee shop, uh, a more personal, privately owned Mirasol type place. Certainly more, um, I mean, it's really built up nicely. They would do a Sunday brunch. They had a, a an eclectic, um, that's what I'm going to call it, an eclectic menu. Most of the time when I would go in there, the business seemed to be thriving. But, you know, sometimes you can see a lot of people and they're sitting around, some with their computers, because you can certainly connect to their Wi-Fi. I know I have. But apparently, uh, not enough ducats were coming in. A few days earlier, we found out that Freestones, which has been closed for several weeks now, but Freestones would not be reopening. And it makes me think of some of the businesses in downtown New Bedford. There have been a couple of restaurants that recently opened. If restaurants are, are, are closing... They're not necessarily closing because you opened up your new establishment. And I believe we don't have as many patrons as we used to have. Number one. Number two. Since the crisis called pandemic, we have a lot of people that are doing takeout and they're ordering takeout and they're having that takeout delivered to their home. Now you might say, well, how's that hurting business? People are still ordering from the restaurant. Yes, they are. But they're not providing the tips that servers and, and, um, the people that clean up the plates, what, what am I thinking? I can't think of that position. Uh, but anyway, those people aren't getting paid because there are no customers. And so they're not getting paid. They look to another establishment if that's the kind of work they want to do. Or they get out of the restaurant business. And the next thing you know, a classic example, classic example. 
woman friend and I went to Lickety Split on uh, yesterday. And we got there and, you know, it's an ice cream place in Westport. They've got a sign up. They're changing their hours. They're now uh, only going to be open Thursday through Sunday. They were closed earlier this month on Monday and Tuesday, and then prior to that only on Monday. Why? Because of help. They've got college students, and the, and the college kids are going back to work. High school kids are going to be going back to to high school. So they don't have the employees to stay open six or seven days a week. And it's also a place that doesn't get too many tips. Yeah, I I threw in, I don't know, 95 cents the other day because of the fact that uh, my bill came out to $16.05, you know, something like that. But you could hear the money just hit the bottom of the container because not too many people are throwing throwing ducats in there. So where is all of this going? It's the economy. It's the economy, stupid. Steamship Authority, they're like Highline. They take uh, folks from Hyannis and Woods Hole over to Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. Even they are canceling service. It's not because people don't want to go to the vineyard or Nantucket. They do. However, because they don't have enough crew members, they are cutting back. WCVB.com, that's Channel 5. Cancellations continued Monday on the Massachusetts Steamship Authority after after, uh, a crew shortage. That led to a slew of canceled trips, frustrated passengers. All customers who were waiting to travel as a result of Saturday's crewing cancellations on the Woods Hole Martha's Vineyard route were accommodated by the end of the day. The ferry operator said because of the changes in operation on Saturday, several vessels ended their operations days later then scheduled. Hmm. Take it back to the restaurants. Denny's. Now you might be saying there's no Denny's around here. No, but there's a Denny's in Fall River. Denny's is having one of those conference, you know, like a Zoom meeting with 19,000 of their shops. Sales are down. Why do you think that is? People not coming through the door. They don't come through the door. Folks don't buy the food. Denny's has already closed a few of their places. I have no idea if the one in Fall River is going to close. But Denny's, I mean, they've been around all of my life. Denny's. Uh, what's the one that woman friend and I were looking at? Um, another almost, almost like fast food. But even, oh, Subway, Subway. One of the largest franchise Sandwich shops in the world. Never mind the country. In the world. They are closing. Sandwich shops. Guess people don't like the Subway subs anymore. What is going on? All right. So, have you heard about this? The Healy administration has decided that it's time to make some changes when it comes to 
migrants and other folks staying in emergency or overflow shelters. And so starting at the beginning of the month, notices for eviction were were issued. The first set of notices went out last week. More went out the following week. And according to the Commonwealth, the number of eviction notices climbed at the overflow shelters from 57 to 128. Now, I'm like a lot of folks, and I don't believe that the you's and me's, the taxpayers, should be paying for it. But I have that looming question in my head. And that is, you put the folks up for a period of time. Now what? You going to let them flounder in the street? How do we change the policy? Well, you would hope that Bacon Hill lawmakers would change the policy. But they're sitting on their hands. They're not changing the policy. And so, the way I look at it is that whether or not you have an open border, you certainly have an open invitation for people to seek out Massachusetts, whether whether they're coming across the international border or crossing a state border to come to Massachusetts to find some type of accommodation. I got this one from the Boston Globe. I have a dream to go to Boston. For Haitians waiting at the border, Massachusetts remains a top destination. Huh. This guy's name is Stanley. 100 degree heat. He's wiping sweat from his face. Said he would like his family to make it to the United States. He has a dream to go to Boston. He's 16 years old. My aunt would would tell me how the snow falls when it's cold. I'd like to see it. Really, Stanley? Hmm. So, there are people still waiting to come. Well, many of our friends and neighbors were trying to figure out how to pay for groceries and, and other bills. Bacon Hill uh, agencies, not the lawmakers, but the agencies, loaded millions, millions of our tax dollars onto debit cards to pay for hotels and catering services for folks involved in the emergency shelter system. Now imagine that. Oh, and Governor Healy? She's okay with it. Even on the trips that she took over to Europe, staying at four and five star hotels, she doesn't give a hoot. I was going to say something else, but she doesn't care. She, you know, this is this is what we should be doing, and darn it, this is what we're going to do. So she doesn't care how she spends your money. She cares that she spends your money. This is Big Government Stories. It certainly is. What's your big government story? 508 996 Hello. Good morning, Brian. How are you, sir? Wing and my wang. Great. Hey, Brian, it's, I want your opinion, like, on something. Uh, it's, 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 I respect you because, like, you're a libertarian, and I can understand why you're not going to vote for Trump and, and why you're not going to vote for Harrison. Your opinion makes sense. After hearing yesterday's ticket for the Democrats' plan, how can anyone, ra- how, can, how can a rational person vote for that ticket? So what she's telling us, Brian, she's going to have, she's going to fix food prices, okay? So basically what's going to happen is, let's say she gets everything that she wants, okay, Brian? 
So let's say stores like Stop and Shop and Shaw's, who basically, over the most part, is more expensive than Market Basket. What will happen after a while? Stop and Shop will close. Shaw's will close. Market Basket will be the only place in town. Can you picture the first of the month trying to get food? They'll, we will definitely have rations if we don't have enough supply. And then let's take our $25,000 program per first home-time buyer. How are we going to afford that? And, let's, and the last time the government got involved in helping us, uh, called the college plans, you know, to give us money for college, college skyrocketed. Can you picture the price of, the price of housing once they get involved? How much is going to skyrocket even worse? Well, uh, it hasn't uh, housing already gone through the well, roof? it is. The reason why it's happening because of inflation in the last four years. No, 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 please. I, I, I beg to differ on that. The reason why it's happening is because the government, the federal government, has gotten involved with the loan program. Yes, that okay. also. And also, also inflation. Also, in the last four years, Brian, I think you know, 80% of all our money in circulation has been printed in the last four years, Brian. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. And on top of that, we got the back door in the southern border wide open. So they tell us that we, that we don't have enough housing, and they're letting millions of people a year come in. So they're causing the problem. And, and then what's their solution? It's like our state, let's build little 900-square-feet homes in people's backyards. How, now, what happens... If you start building those things, people start renting them out as A, B, and Bs or, or short-term rentals. How about the quality of life of people who live next door? Is, can you picture, the, you picture the, a city like New Bedford, which I used to live in, that they're very close to one another. Even in the West End, like where I lived, I had a little bit of a yard, but not much. Now, someone puts a 900-foot little house right against my fence. What kind of quality of life are those person in the city going to have in their backyard, have cookouts and everything else? with people literally living on top of you, as bad as it is. And how about the suburbs? It's going to ruin the suburbs. Because if you get somebody who has a good piece of land who decides to put maybe two of those houses in there and make it maybe in bees. I think you make great points. Right. Um, But even before we go down that road, my major problem is, is you've got the federal government interfering with what might be a state's rights type of issue. I agree. Uh, maybe I agree not with 100%. groceries because that, that could be interstate commerce, but certainly with housing. I and certainly with education. Yes. So you, you asked the question, what person in their right mind? Yes. I, and I think we had this conversation before about people act on emotion. They oh don't, God, act, they, they don't sit know. there and, and try to rationalize things. They're thinking, well, I've got all these bills. And I've got somebody out there who's going to take care of these bills. What I, I, I will commend Kamala Harris for one thing. She has some balls to come up with an agenda like this and to announce it. I mean, I, I disagree with all of it. But because what she, she has done, is right. she is now putting that, that wedge in there. Either you're going to support Donald Trump or you're going to support me. And now this is where I, I'm, I'm going to, I told this to Barry. I said, she will win the popular vote. She may not get the electoral college vote, but she will win the popular vote and because you know she, she is reaching to, she's mm-hmm. hitting that emotional cord. And do you know why she's going to get probably the popular vote? In one word, the school system who has totally indoctrinated these children to believe everything is given to you, to believe, to be sensitive of every word that's spoken against you, to be a weak person. That's what the school system did to this generation. They want everything for nothing. Gotcha. That's the problem. That's the problem. Uh, look, I, I, so it, how often do you hear me speak highly of the school system? Oh, I know. Brian, listen, I'm paying out of my pocket, and it was money well, well invested. And, and I tell everybody now who have children, who are planning on having children, one thing you have to calculate is private education, because public education is not an option anymore. Gotcha, man. Take, take Th- care, Brian. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate thank the call. 508-996-0500. Vice President Kamala Harris, North Carolina yesterday, she unveiled this economic agenda 
Unbelievable. I was going to wait until next hour, but since the caller brought it up, hey, as president, this is what she stated. As president, I will be laser focused on creating opportunities for the middle class that advance their economic security, stability, and dignity. Really? This might be a little offshoot. I tell people to seek opportunities, not security, because if you're out looking for security and you you don't get the opportunity, then you're going to end up failing at both. Lots of big government stories and certainly the vice president who wants to be president came out with a bold, bold and moldy economic agenda. Let's see. And give me give me your thoughts on this. She wants to expand. I didn't really know we had a had a program, but expand.